good. It's uh, great to have you back. I have about uh, six of them standing up. Also, if we have any uh, current or former members of the Alumni Association Board or the Academy Board, could you please stand and be recognized? And then just want to make a, another note of it, even though Dr. Hines uh, had also mentioned as well, if you could just give a round of applause for our wonderful trustees who give up so much for this university. <laughs> Dr. Hines, if you don't mind, can you come up here and help me out with the presentation? So um, I'm going a little bit off script here, so I hope uh, we don't mind. Um, but uh, Coach Lynn and Coach Anders, I need you to come forward and help us out up here for a second. So if you make your way up here. Uh, so what we'd like to point out is uh, our baseball team had a tremendous season this year. They won the American Southwest Conference uh, regular season championship. Uh, they had a 17-4 and record. Broke numerous records this year. We were able to host the ASC Conference Championship for the first time in school history. Um, and so what, what these guys don't know is we were able to pull a few strings and uh, get our regular season conference championship platform tonight. So we wanted to season for our uh, athletic department, our baseball program. <clears throat> what I'm probably the most proud uh, about those two gentlemen right there is they consistently have between 45 and 50 young men in their program, and for the second year in a row, their team GPA was over a 3.0, and so they're doing a fantastic job. And uh, their team has also logged uh, over a thousand hours last year and this year in community service. And so uh, they're definitely doing, doing it right in a program that we're proud of for sure. So, um, so we'll go ahead and get, get back on script. I appreciate you bearing with me on that. So uh, first up, presenting uh, the 2019 HBU Sports Alumni Coach of the Year Award will be HBU Head Football Coach Braxton Harris. Casey Pierce was a standout football and track athlete at Howard Payne University, and that dedication has allowed him to continue to have success throughout his coaching career. As a student athlete at Howard Payne, Casey Pierce was a standout on the football field and a three-time All-American in track and field. In track, Pierce was a member of the HPU 4x100 and 4x400 relay teams, qualifying for the NCAA National Meet also throwing the javelin for the Yellow Jackets. Pierce went on to become the HBU record holder and medal at nationals multiple years. He would rank in the top 20 among USA javelin throwers from 1999 to 2004. He, and he was a 2000 and 2004 USA Olympic trials qualifier in the event. After graduation, from HPU in 1997, Casey went on to have football and track st coaching stints in Stanford, Odessa Permian, Pilot Point, and Longview High Schools. He helped lead Stanford to two district championships in 1997 and 2001, and in 11 district titles in 13 seasons at Longview High School. As defensive coordinator and associate head coach at Longview for the past 13 seasons, Pierce's defense helped bring home 12 of the 13 district championships in football at the 5A and 6A level and a 6A Division II 
champ state championship in 2018, posting a perfect 16-0 record. His track teams have been successful winning six district championships at Stanford and four district championships and area championships with the boys and girls at Longview. The last one coming in 2018 for the boys. The first in 18 years for Longview High School. Casey has coached numerous all district, all state, and NCAA athletes. One Air Force All-American, 6A Defensive Player of the Year, and several NFL players as well as multiple individual state medalists in track and field. He has been named East Texas Prep Track Coach of the Year in 2015 for the girls and in 2016 on the boys' side, and was also a 2002 West Texas FCA All-Star Game Assistant Coach in 2002. Pierce has been a speaker at multiple clinics as a presenter and a lecturer on football and track and in the field topics, as well as serving on serving as a UIL state track and field official for the past 16 years. Casey is married to his wife, Monica, and they have one son, Gunnar, and currently live in Longview, Texas. For his excellence in education, coaching, and character development in his career, Howard Payne University Athletics recognizes Casey Pierce as a 2019 HV Sports Alumni Coach of the Year. Thank you for the introduction. Unbelievable. This is a great honor, and I appreciate uh, everyone that came tonight at our table. And uh, the things that I took from our pain have given me this opportunity to, to reach out to the youth, uh, to reach out to other coaches, and be parts of great staffs and uh, great success in the world. I've been. So, thank you. Now presenting our second 2019 HBU Sports Alumni Coach of the Year award will be HBU Assistant Athletic Assistant Director of Athletics, Aaron Cho. Rhonda Yar Yarborough Farney never had the opportunity to represent Howard Payne University athletically, but if she had, she would have been more likely successful as she's been since graduating from Howard Payne in 1975. At the age of 19, she graduated summa cum laude one year before Howard Payne would field intercollegiate athletics for women. She spent the first 12 years of her coaching and teaching career at Goldthwaite and Ozona High Schools, winning 10 district championships, four bi-district championships, two area championships, while making four regional appearances. Her teams won 20 or more games each season, and nine players would go on to receive collegiate scholarships. Now at Georgetown High School, with 31 years of head coaching experience, Rhonda Carney has amassed 1,157 wins with 327 losses in her coaching career. That's a 7 7 9, 779 winning percentage. Rhonda's 1,157 wins places her second among active girls basketball coaches uh, at the high school ranks in the state of Texas. Coach Farney is ranked also sixth nationally in the National Federation of High, school, uh, high School's record book for the most career victories, where she surpassed legendary uh, Bertha Teague's 1,152 victories this past season. During her time, Barney has led squads to 26 state playoff uh, appearances and back-to-back -back, uh, UIL Class 4A state tournaments in 2013 and 14. 
and taking home the state title for the Lady Eagles in 2013. More than 66 of her student athletes that she's coached have moved on to play at the collegiate level. Among her many honors include the National Federation of High School Coaches, 2013 National Coach of the Year. She's a seven-time Women's Basketball Coaches Association Victory Club Award recipient and was inducted as a member of the Texas Basketball Hall of Fame in 2013. In 2014, she recorded her 1,000th career victory and was inducted in the Texas Girls Coaches Association Hall of Fame. That same year, she also received the UIL uh, Sponsor Excellence Award. In capping it all off in 2017, Rhonda was honored as the United States Marine Corps and Women's Basketball Coaches Association National High School Coach of the Year. She received the Pat Summit Trophy at the NCAA Final Four in Dallas that year in recognition of that honor. Rhonda Farney gives credit to her husband, Dr. Bill Farney, former UIL Athletic and Executive Director, as well as her parents, Woody and Joyce Appleton, who are now deceased. Her two younger sisters, Ginger Whitehead and her husband, Ronnie, who is an HBU graduate, uh, they live in Glen, of Glen Rose. And then her other sister, Nina Milliron, and her husband, Brian, both of Burnett, Texas. For her excellence in education, coaching, and, and character development in her career, Howard Payne University recognizes Rhonda Yarborough Farney as a 2019 HBU Sports Alumni Coach of the Year. So much. I'm just a country girl from Lomita, Texas, that uh, started Howard Payne when I was 60 years old, graduated, uh, stayed in Central Texas for a long time, coached at Gold White, and uh, I tell people all the time everything that I've ever needed to know, either learned at Lomita High School or here at Howard Payne. Thank you so, so much. HBU Sports Alumni uh, of the Year Award will be HBU Director of Athletics, Hunter Sitt. <coughs> Mr. Morrison, before we get started, I just want to tell you thank you. I don't know how many times I've had students come up to me and say, what is that man's job title? And uh, I don't talk him out of the fact that you actually don't have a job at Howard Payne, but I just said he's a caretaker of all students. And so uh, know that you have a huge impact on our coaches and our students, and we don't tell you enough. And you're around enough that people think that, that you're on the payroll, so just FYI. <laughs> um, even before his recent retirement, 36, uh, 36 years from the public school education, Robert Morrison has stayed closely connected uh, to his alma mater. Morrison graduated from HBU in 1982 with a degree in physical education and a minor in social studies. While at HBU, he was involved in Jackets for Jesus and was captain of the Yellow Jacket football team. He went on to sign a free agent contact, contract with the NFL Seattle Seahawks before sustaining a career ending injury. Morrison went on to earn a Master's of Education and a degree from Tarleton State University in 1987 and principal certification and master's of education degree in education administration from Prairie View A&M University in 1998. That's a little wordy because that's two master's degrees. His career in education includes teaching, coaching, and administrative positions at several Texas high schools. He began his coaching and teaching career at Banks High School before becoming a teacher and a coach 
at Westfield High School in Spring, Texas. He then served as assistant and associate principal at Spring High School, assistant and associate principal at Montgomery High School, and principal at Sweeney High School. He eventually retired in June of 2018 as an administrator of the Abilene Independent School District. Morrison's professional affiliations include memberships in the Texas Association of Secondary School Principals, also past and present, the Texas Association of African American Principals, the Legislation Committee, the Texas Assistant Principals Committee, the Texas High School Coaches Association, and the National Association of Secondary School Principals. He has received, received numerous honors including Teacher of the Year at Banks High School and Texas Association Secondary School Principals Assistant Principal of the Year for Region 16 in 2012 and 2013. Now serving as a member of the Howard Penn University Board of Trustees since January of 2018, Morrison has been actively involved in his service on the Alumni Association Board, the African American Alumni Association Chapter for many years, has spoken at the 2018 HBU National Student Athlete Luncheon, and this year was the 2019 keynote HBU commencement speaker. Robert Morrison says Howard Payne provided him with a faith-based education, lifetime of friends and connections, and he is, it is truly and he has truly given his time, treasures, and talents to Howard Payne University for his excellence in education, career development commitment to Howard Payne University, support of Howard Payne Athletics. HBU Athletics recognizes Robert Morrison as the 2019 HBU Sports Alumni of the Year. And uh, I want to thank you, appreciate you for the, the work that you spoke up here. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. And I want to give some appreciation to some people who helped me be who I am today. Uh, I'm blessed and honored to have some of my uh, former coaches here. My high school coach, if you would just raise your hand, Coach Mike, Mike Oregon and his wife. Uh, I started out with him and I remember him as a coach that he said he just talked with me about life. We learned about football, but we had a lot of life discussions just like we do right now. I, I was blessed to have you in my life, and I appreciate you. Uh, my uh, college coaches are here, Coach Dan Slayton. You see, see him right over here to my left. Coach Slayton was a great man. Taught me how to work hard and appreciate. Not probably the only person on the team that didn't fear coach. <laughs> For some reason he liked me, so we were here. <laughs> but, but he's a great man, and I really, I really love him and respect him. We have Mark back, a coach over here That's to my right. Mark served as one of our co my coaches here. You're a great example of being a godly man. And he and his wife, I really appreciate him. His wife was actually pregnant the entire time I was at Howard Payne University. <laughs> <laughs> right back in the center, Coach Clyde Alexander. He's my coach here at Howard Payne. Uh, uh, my coach every day coming off the field. First coach I had to ever hug me and tell me that he loved me every single day. And so as I see him do it, as life travels on to this day, he loves me, hugs me, and loves me. Uh, I have a friend there, Ken Kelso. He and I went to Howard Payne together. Uh, he had a cheating story, but there's enough 
time I'll tell that story. <laughs> but he, he and I went through the Howard family together. We were great friends. Ms. Carol Spratt, Ms. Fer Ms. Spratt has probably fed more people, students in Brownwood than anyone else without knowing it. You know, I met her family when I was in college. I went over there and ate every day. And whoever I brought with me, we went there and ate. But she's taking care of a lot of kids that go to Howard Payne University. Uh, my nephew, I just want to recognize him because he, he takes people who look better than he does. And that's all I have to say about him. But I want to end it up and say thank you all. You guys, I, did I mention you all? You all are part of who I am to this day. And the, the awards that I have received, or the blessings I have received, are a part of you all. Thank you for the job you've done in developing me. Thank you. supposed to walk you through the 1971 season and with that in mind I have to have a few notes and we're on a podium on wheels and my hands are a little shaky and I'm a little bit feeble so if the podium ends up down there in the back of Abram show you'll know why I'm not gonna stand up here and tell you I'm the most feeble that's been up here, but I was told a moment ago that I'm the only one here tonight who's shaking hands with all five mannequins. and say uh, thank you to uh, Phil Watts, Denise Hudson, and, and Abram Schultz. They did most of the research on what I'm about to share with you. Tonight I've got the honor of sharing a very, very special team. The 1971 Howard Bain Yellow Jacket football team. Coached by uh, James Cameron, Dean Slayton, Wayne Rathke, Mike Martin, and uh, whoever else great players, great coaches. They were the co-champions of the Lone Star Conference in 1971. Howard Payne opened the season that year stumbling out of the gate as they played Texas Lutheran down in Seguin. Here are the final stats. They lost three fumbles, threw an interception, and penalized 11 times for 91 yards. I was not having fun broadcasting the game, and I said, is this it? Is this going to be the 1971 football team? But we were undefeated after one game, a 7 nothing victory. And then we went to Louisiana and played Northwest Louisiana State. They were a much bigger school and a bigger division and expected to win the ball game. At least the prognosticators thought they would win. They ended up having negative rushing yards in the first half, and then Howard Payne rolled in the second half and won 24 to 7. We opened conference play and went to Nacogdoches and played Stephen F. Austin and beat them 38 to 27. 
Then we beat East Texas back home at the old stadium, 37 to 13. We were 2 and 0 in league play, and we took that momentum out west and beat Salt Rock by a score of 37 to nothing. We lost one game that year, and it was on a visit to San Angelo, and we got knocked off by Angelo State, 28 to 26. Still. 5-1 on the season. Beat Tarleton in the next ball game by a score of 29-14. to 14. And then came the game that I think proved that we were champions. I think the season turned on this one game. We went to Huntsville to play San Houston State. And we turned the ball over the first time we had it. We turned the ball over the second time we had it. We turned the ball over the third time we had it. We were down 17, I think, early on in that ball game. And I, I don't know what the coaches did in particular, but we may have been trying to be a little bit too fancy and throwing a little more than we should be throwing. But, but I'm going to tell you what, when they left the sideline after that last Sam Houston touchdown, down 17 to nothing, it was like uh, the forward pass had been, had become criminalized. It was like we were not allowed to touch the ball and raise our arm at the same time. It was just, it was ground and pound. And I think that team that was good became a champion that afternoon. Final score of that ball game was Howard Payne 53, Sam Houston 17. Well, now we're a game out of first place. And Southwest Texas was coming to town. They were ranked in the top 10 in the nation. In fact, it's the Lone Star Conference at this time of the season had three teams in the top 10 in the nation, us, a and I, and uh, Southwest Texas State. Well, they came to the old stadium in Brownwood, and I think, I can't, verify this for sure, but I think this was the last football game uh, Howard Payne ever played in the old stadium in Brownwood. That stadium seated about 6,500 people and the officials at the stadium and, and uh, newspaper people said there were 9,000 people there that night to watch Howard Payne in Southwest Texas do battle. And boy, what a battle it was. It was absolutely one of the most brutal college football games that I've ever witnessed. The game ended up a nine to nine tie. Ironically enough, each team got a touchdown, each team kicked an extra point, each team got a safety. A nine nine ball game. So now, after that, Texas A and I, the defending national champs, were undefeated, and we in Southwest Texas State were undefeated, but at a time. And so the next ball game, we go to Kingsville to play Texas A and I. They haven't lost a game in over five years at home. Defending national champs, and over 20,000 people were in Havelina Stadium in Kingsville that night. Probably the most unbelievable football game that I've ever seen. We scored in, uh, and, and I wish I could document it and reel them off to you, but we scored in every way I think you can score on a football field. I think we got a touchdown and a one-point conversion, a touchdown and two points. Maybe we didn't get a second touchdown, but we had field goals and we had safeties. And I think we set a school and conference records for, a record for safeties in that ball game. But it was absolutely an unreal ball game. I've never seen a defense play better than our Baines played on that night. We won by a score of 20 to 14. First time A and I had lost since back in 1966. Ken Sanders, the best defensive player I've ever seen in Howard Payne, and uh, I wish there was some way they could have made a, a, a highlight reel of that night in Kingsville. I've never seen a defensive player 
at that kind of a game. He was in every stat you could imagine. Tackles, tackles behind the line of scrimmage, sacks, safeties. It was so unbelievable on their last drive and, and you have to realize that back then we didn't know what a shotgun offense was. There was no such thing. But I know in the fourth quarter of that ball game, I kept saying they're in short punt formation. And they were in short punt formation, and Sanders and company were still sacking them and, and uh, doing all kinds of damage to them. And, and uh, then the last drive of the ball game, I, I would say they're in long punt formation. I mean, they were backing up and backing up and backing up on every step just to get away from the pressure of uh, the rush that was coming. And I think their last pass, I think maybe Adel intercepted it. And somebody picked one off and we had the win. And we beat Texas a and I by a score of 20 to 14. Now, of course, we wanted a championship. But to get a championship on that last weekend of the season, A and I had to lose again, and they were playing Southwest Texas. Meanwhile, we were playing back Murray, and I knew we would win that ball game. But we, just, we prayed for Southwest Texas to win because only that way could we get a share of the championship. And believe it or not, A and I fell in back-to-back -back ball games, and Southwest Texas beat them 29 to 24, and we routed Matt Murray, and therefore we finished as co-champions with Southwest Texas State. But most importantly, we finished the season ranked number three in the nation. Southwest Texas was fourth in the nation, and A&I was about ninth in the nation. Well, what we got for it was an invitation to the first ever Cowboy Bowl in Lawton, Oklahoma, and we beat Cameron College 16 to 13. We finished the season with 10 wins, one loss, and one tie. It was the best record for the Yellow Jackets on the gridiron since back in 1954. The Yellow Jacket defense shut out three opponents, Texas Lutheran, Saul Ross, and Matt Murray. And we finished at number three in the nations and 11 players with all Lone Star Conference honors. If the playoff system back then were like it is today, I really believe we would have won the national championship. They had this goofy deal back then where they had a final four, and the final four each had to come from a separate region in the nation. And it so happened that the number one and number three and number four teams in the nation were all from the south. And that being the case, the number one team in the south was one of the participants, and then the number one team in the east, the number one team in the west, number one team in the north. So we got left out. Today, I don't think we would have been left out. And I can't tell you how many coaches in the conference who saw the national championship game to a person came up to me and said, Howard Payne would have won this, hands down. So this team, even though it doesn't have the trophy, to me it's always the national championship team of 1971. 1971 LSC football honors. Kim Sanders, first team defense. J.D. Sykes Award for outstanding linemen. He is the absolute best I've ever seen. Number one draft choice of the Detroit Lions and also played for the Minnesota Vikings. Edward Robinson, first team defense. Robert Woods, Rocky, first team defense. He spent some time in the NFL. Mike Murphy, first team offense. Gil Gore, first team offense. Charles Lewis, first team offense. Ronnie Cauliflower, second team offense. J.D. Rollins Award for outstanding back. I've had people ask me over the years, they said, uh, was Cauliflower a good passer? I don't know. Was he a good runner? Not really. What was he good at? I just say, winning. That's it. Obi Rockwell, second team. Bobby Hammer, honorable mention. Harold Bryant, honorable mention. Otis Fields, honorable mention. Charles Lewis and Bobby Hammer both led the Lone Star Conference in scoring. They had 84 points apiece that year. 71 team to this day still holds the Howard Payne records for rushing attempts in a game. 71 against Sol Ross. 
most rushing attempts in a season, 620, most rushing yards in a season, 2,640. I'll just stand here tonight and tell you very simply in introducing them, they were the best team, the best team at Howard Payne that I've ever seen. For their excellence on the field of competition and their commitment to Howard Payne University and Howard Payne Athletics, Howard Payne University recognizes the 1971 Howard Payne College football team is the 2019 Howard Payne Sports Team of the Year. You guys stand. to you. So any members of that 71 team, please, please come forward. We have somebody to present to you and we'll get a team picture of you.
this time I'm speaking on behalf of the team is Harold Bryant. First, I'd like to thank the athletic department, athletic director, coaches that they've uh, made this a special weekend for us. Uh, we spent some time with them this afternoon. Touring the facilities are, are slightly different than what we had. Uh, and also talked about the equipment that was slightly different. Uh, uh, I was here three and a half years. When I came, they issued me a pair of uh, soccer shoes. When I left, I gave them back to them. <laughs> I, uh, first game, I got a pair, of new, new pair of game shoes. Three years later, I gave them back. Uh, I guess uh, maybe it was the second season I was here, Ray Jacobs was a uh, graduate assistant. He had played in the AFL, and he came back to get his degree. We were getting dressed for a game, and he said, hey, what numbers inside those pants you got? And I rolled him down and told him, uh, number 62, I think. He said, oh, dang, those are the same pants I wore when I was here. <laughs> But all that, all that aside, uh, I worked, uh, that's, I don't know how long it took somebody to do your script, but I worked for two weeks putting the stats together. You said that cauliflower couldn't pass. We averaged five passes per game. Our ponies averaged 10 passes per game. We, per completion, uh, we averaged 18 yards. Our ponies averaged 10. So it, he was just like a lot of my teammates. We weren't athletically gifted. We, he wasn't the best passer, the best runner. He may have been the slowest guy on the team, but you could not catch him. But dedication to each other. And I think uh, to, to sum it up, today we were in the locker room and they prepared things for us. And, we were having a good time visiting, and I asked uh, if we needed to move on. And the head, the head coach said, no, there's too much love in this room. Love and respect, I think, is what's, <clears throat> what you could say to this team, man. Right here. Uh,
and uh, settle up, and we appreciate uh, the love and the support from all the uh, donors that made that possible for us to be able to provide those things um, for you, and we really appreciate and the support as well. Um, as a reminder, we do have a homecoming coming up. It's definitely right around the corner. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough weekend for me personally because it's opening weekend of uh, deer rifle season, November the 2nd, first weekend of November. And so um, if you're planning on coming back, I say that to encourage you to get your hotels early because you know in Brownwood, Texas, those hotels will go fast uh, with it being the hunting season. <clears throat> um, so we'd love to see you back. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or not, but I often refer to homecoming as uh, a family reunion. And uh, to me, that's really what it is. If you haven't been back in a while, I really encourage you to come back and love on our students and for you to tell them your story of why they need to stick it out and why they need Howard Payne more than they think that they need it. Uh, to hear from you that are successful uh, goes further than, than you would think. Um, the last two things I just want to tell. Thank you to my wife. I appreciate it. Being an athletic director, we're always in season. So I apologize. Thanks for raising our kids. Uh, I can't tell you enough for that. So, and all the coaching staff. Uh, we're, we're extremely fortunate and blessed. We have roughly around 20, 20 coaches' kids under the age of 12 in the athletic department right now. So uh, Dr. Hines. You'll come to realize if you come over to our building after about 3.30, it's sometimes a part-time daycare between all of us up there. So um, it's wonderful. The uh, special announcement that I would like to make for our next uh, banquet, and uh, which will be the third week of May um, in, in 2020, our uh, HP Sports Alumni Team of the Year will be the 1975 and 76 inaugural volleyball team for Howard Penn University. So if we could give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a team member. Lori, are you the only one here tonight off that team? Okay, well. <clears throat> round up your sisters and get them here to the next year. We're excited. Okay. <laughs> No comment. Uh, that'll be great. Uh, we, we got to hear from uh, Melinda Kirst earlier this year. She spoke to our student athletes and she had a huge part of that and uh, the push for Title IX uh, for equality for men and women's sports. And we're definitely going to honor that quickly, how big of an impact that, that, that is and was um, on our campus. And so, um, at this time, we're going to close with, with two things as I pray, and Abram's going to come up here and he's going to uh, lead us, because I think the only fitting way uh, to send you guys out of here is by singing the whole matter together. So um, if you could, please bow your head and pray for me. Most Christ in the Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. <clears throat> thank you so much for this wonderful institution that is yours. Help us. Uh, to lead and guide these students and make every decision uh, based on what is best for each one of our students. Thank you so much for our alumni. Thank you so much uh, for the love that they have for this university. <clears throat> Help us to represent you well in each of our actions, uh, that we glorify you, the audience of one, and that we push forward and uh, make Howard Payne the greatest uh, Christian university, the greatest Christian education that a student can get and always be focused on that student Christian experience. Please forgive us for all of our sins, and uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be able to celebrate this wonderful evening. and your sons, let me pray. Amen. Amen. If you'll stand with me this time, as we formally, traditionally do, we face towards our main, our main in the direction of the here. Father, we